I'm Father John Flesser. I'm an Orthodox priest. I've been uh, a priest for over 40 years. I attended St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary in New York. And since graduation, I've accumulated a large number of articles on various topics related to the church. And specifically from these articles, I've, I've picked out selected articles for this book that we just published, which is called God Discriminates. And here in this book itself, uh, we cover different topics. And we begin here um, in this selection in, in talking about the, some of the topics in particular. It begins with how God created the world out of nothing. And from after he completed his creation, then he created male. He created man. And when he created man, here he created man in his own image. And the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. And from this, we have this beginning of the establishment of the family, of a way of life given here by God. Uh, God himself, and that marriage is only between a male and a female. And we see here today one of the difficulties we're faced with, um, and this is why this article, the articles that I printed in this book really, really become very important, because we have a conflict with the Orthodox faith today. And that conflict is, is that Orthodoxy teaches a way of life that means to struggle against the passions, to overcome lust, to overcome carnal lust, to come up, overcome greed, anger, etc., unrighteousness, and to seek here, if you will, righteousness and a, a way of life that follows our Savior. Today we have, on in fact, and I will let me clarify just a second. I I emphasize Orthodox because there are other Christian bodies which themselves do not f accept or follow or believe that which the Orthodox faith teaches, which means, which states the Orthodox teaching is that God created for us a way of life, and that is the sexual relations is only blessed in marriage. Outside of marriage, it's, it here is considered as fornication, adultery, uh, and we also see a way of life here in which one is willing to sacrifice himself, is willing to accept suffering and pain in order to fulfill here that which God has shown to us. The world today offers us a different way of life. It offers us a hedonistic approach to life, a life here that says, be self-indulgent. Here, have, if you will, sensual self-indulgence, no restraints, do as you please, to disobey parents, to disobey the laws if you don't agree with them. And this way of life that, w that we see is being espoused here, especially in this environment of today, has been accepted by huge numbers of people. Because, and it is not just youth we're talking about, we're all talking about adults and even elderly couples themselves have accepted this idea of this freedom uh, uh, without restraint. Uh, we see here this being promulgated through abortion. It's being promulgated through same-sex marriages, uh, through promiscuity, married, sexual relations prior to being married. And in the midst of all this, what has been denied, or what has been not just denied, but is not been given a platform to offer a different way of life, which is basically... Uh, for us, an orthodox understanding, a life here of holiness, of purity, of virginity, of seeking communion with God. And this voice has been stymied. And as a result of it, we, we can't even bring forth in a discussion, either publicly or in many cases even privately among people, that God has shown us a different way of living. Because when we here raise these issues, we're, we're looked at as being called, in fact, we're being called intolerant. We're being told that uh, you have no compassion and no love. And in the midst of this, what has been forgotten is what God himself has commanded. As we read here in Leviticus, God says that, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. 
And then in the, in the epistle to Romans, God, God gave us this, as St. Paul writes. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also, the men, leaving the natural use of woman, burned in their lust one toward another. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This has become, uh, this hedonistic uh, philosophy has been accepted without question by so many people. We see this happening in, in, through the laws that have been passed here in America, the legalizing of same-sex marriages, the legal, uh, legalizing of marijuana, the use of marijuana, without question that somehow there's something wrong when you give in, when you no longer can control your passions. And so for orthodoxy here, we see a whole way of life that has been given to us in Christ. Christ, after he rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples, and he said to them, he, he not only said to them, he upbraided them for their unbelief because, and their hardness of heart because they believed not that which they had, not them which had seen him after he was arisen from the dead. Well, we not only have, we ourselves have not seen Christ, but we have a witness of 2,000 years of the saints, of the apostles themselves, and that repository of truth that has been given to us in the church that brings us this teaching to us to understand that we have a different way of living. And so in the book of God Discriminates, these articles that I put together discuss here both by clergy and by laymen, how one approaches to come to understand how God who has created all from nothing and has given us life also gives us the hope that we have in, in salvation, in seeking life eternal, because that is our goal. Christ said, my kingdom is not of this earth. The world is saying, the kingdom is only of this earth. And so we have choices to make. The society can pass all the laws they want. We have laws saying abortion is okay. We have laws saying smoking marijuana is legal in many states. But we here have to come to understand there is a different law that given to us by God. We have to remember, Christ said, Render unto, therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And that means we have to choose in this life. We have to choose between a way of life that leads to life eternal or a way of life that leads to destruction, death, and eternal damnation. An example of how we are to choose a different way of life, we have in the example of St. Ephemia. And St. Ephemia here shows to us with 30, 38 other Christian martyrs. They were brought before Priscus, at that time, and they were told they had to worship the false god Eris. And they all refused to worship the false god. And they were being condemned to death. And Persis asked them, why, why are you refusing here to worship Eris? And Ephemius and they all replied as with one voice, and they said, both the emperors and your command should be obeyed if they are not contrary to God. But if they are contrary to God, they should not only be disobeyed, but they should be opposed. And so we today hear for ourselves, if we profess to be not only Orthodox Christians, but if we profess to be Christians at all, here come to understand that we are to choose a different way of life. It means that we are to become willing to change our behavior, to change our attitude or our disposition. For it's, this is the challenge that is before us. And so the difficulty here in all this is, you know, the easy solution to abolish abortion, to abolish 
sexually transmitted diseases, HIV, all these diseases that we hear about. The solution is not to find a pill that you can take that will cure you of the disease. The solution is to change your behavior, to live a life of purity, to truly see the sanctity that exists in marriage. These are choices that we each have to make. And I said, in these articles that are in the book, they touch upon all these topics directly and indirectly. In addition to these, we also have articles in the book that discuss here uh, the, uh, the whole relationship of man and woman. They talk about the article. We have an, an article here that gives a historical perspective, which is very nice to see, of how the marriage service developed in the, in the church from the early centuries onward. It's not an in-depth study, but it gives you a nice overview of what the Orthodox Church has taught and how the marriage service came about. And it's helpful, not only for Orthodox, but for Protestants and Roman Catholics, for the non-Orthodox, to understand that there was a whole development of the church in these years. In addition, we have other articles uh, that also touch upon divorce and remarriage in the Orthodox Church. Topics here that really should be brought forward and discussed, not only among the Orthodox, but for the non-Orthodox to appreciate that which the church, church has been teaching here for these low, these many years. So in essence, that's what we have brought together in this book, God Discriminates. And I pray that some of you may take the time to either order the book online or you can order it directly from me as well.